and you've got your eye on the waiting room. Great. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and start then. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Kathy Renfeld from the Cordova Chamber of Commerce, as many of you know, and I'm happy to see everyone here today to discuss and learn about Cordova's new destination strategy and tourism marketing campaign. I'm excited to be sharing with you the details of the fantastic opportunity that we were given by the state of Alaska and uh, how the work that we've begun can benefit Cordova's economy, environment, and quality of life. Joining us today to present our new tourism marketing campaign and its results are Jesse Aleva and Leslie Stocker from the Anchorage-based firm Spawn Ideas. We'll also hear from Kristen Dahl, the destination marketing firm Cross Current Collective, who will share Cordova's new 15-year destination strategy. And Kobe Lynn Rogers from Cordova Chamber will be sharing your new business toolkit. That's a free resource that we've designed to help Cordova businesses leverage and build off the foundation of this successful campaign. And there's also going to be information about some more ways to participate in and support this work so that it can continue to add value to Cordova. This work was made possible by a grant from the state of Alaska Department of Commerce, Community and Economic Development. There was a very fast timeline for this grant. So there was only 10 days, five work days, weekdays actually, to respond with a fully formed uh, proposal to this competitive grant. And then a time frame of less than three months for all of this work to be completed. Oops. Uh, timeline. Our proposal competed against many and was awarded one of the largest grants given to a community. The statewide and regional ent entities here, those are ones that support multiple communities are in gray. And so you can see that um, Cordova actually got a larger grant than many other communities that are much bigger than Cordova. In addition to time, another limitation of this grant was the eligible expenses. We were required to spend all grant funds in one of these categories that you see listed here. And I think we really made the most out of this grant. We really uh, worked together um, as, a, as a team to, to push forward with some really impressive results. And one person I haven't introduced yet is Seth Walker, who's on this call as well. He was our project manager and really helped to keep all the trains moving and um, keep all the pieces running together. Our destination strategy, which you'll hear more about later, allows us to get behind the driver's seat a little and lay out what we really want to see happen in our community. The triple bottom line is a concept of sustainable tourism that believes if done correctly, tourism can benefit the local quality of life by adding amenities and recreation opportunities for residents and can celebrate and protect the culture and ecosystems that make a destination unique and special while offering that positive economic impact. In looking at the future of our community, we wanna step beyond this. Um, regenerative tourism is a brand new model. And so there's no universal definition yet for it, but it centers around the idea that there is actually an opportunity for visitors to leave a destination better than they found it. It addresses impacts holistically from the destination perspectives as well as environmental and community. And it seeks to work together with and build up the local ecosystem and cultures as well as the current industries and current businesses. It's a realization that sometimes quality is more important than quantity. A modest number of high impact visitors can have more impact than a large volume, especially once environmental and cultural impacts are factored in. In order to accomplish this, the outreach must be targeted at the right individuals and groups. And this also helps to best utilize tourism marketing dollars for the community. Think of it like going from this type of advertising where we have a message and we're screaming it from a billboard, hoping somebody will hear it. Not that Cordova has ever bought a billboard, but the, the idea of, throwing your message out there and just seeing it if it sticks. Going from that to this, where we have located an individual with proven interest in Cordova and, oops, geez Louise. And we're able to 
and we're able to message directly to them, giving the little nudge that they need to choose Cordova. And we, along with our local businesses, all have the tools to reinforce that message through each of our channels. Here on the screen, you'll see some of the new assets that were created um, in this campaign, along with the refreshed website. We also were able to create some new print assets like the tours and brochure on the left and the lamppost banners, which Seth got to see in person today um, mm -hmm. in the middle. And then scrolling on the right side of the screen, that's our new uh, digital visitor's guide. And within that, we were even able to um, create an updated Cordova Center facility guide going after our um, meeting market of, of visitors as well. Providing the information and resources that independent travelers need to plan a trip, and then they can share that with like-minded travelers. These are just a few examples of uh, Cordova businesses and organizations that um, are jumping on the bandwagon and starting to participate in this campaign in ways that um, boost up the marketing of the entire community and add some um, legs to their personal business marketing campaigns. And we'll learn more about that later. And I also wanted to um, just thank all of the presenters that are here today. And um, now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand over the mic to Mr. Jesse Aleva. Great, thank you so much, Kathy. Um, good evening all, my name is Jesse Aleva. I'm a market researcher and um, strategist uh, up in Anchorage, Alaska. And this was a very fun, cool project. I actually came down to uh, Cordova and uh, got a chance to see the sites uh, and talk to uh, some folks down there. And that was really instrumental in uh, putting together the strategy uh, that helps inform uh, some of the executions that actually all the executions uh, that you just saw. So I'm gonna briefly take you through um, a little bit of the process, a little bit of the uh, targeting, and how we developed uh, the Sea Life uh, campaign. So really this work uh, came about uh, from a, it's not necessarily, I guess, maybe a tagline, but really like a platform uh, that was uh, already kind of in use uh, down in Cordova coming out of the Prince William Sound, uh, Science Center, uh, this idea that um, Cordova is home to uh, the world's richest waters. And how could we use that wonderful asset um, to its um, full potential to attract uh, adventure travelers? Uh, these are the types of tourists that Kathy was talking about, where they might be a little bit smaller in number uh, compared to uh, the mass tourist that comes to uh, Alaska, but they're looking for a very distinct um, experience, and that is adventure travel. And it's really made up of three different things. Um, an experience uh, out in nature, some part of it that is a physical activity, and really immersing uh, in the culture uh, of a place. And really this sort of captures uh, a certain outlook on life, a certain way that folks like to travel. It's not specific to any particular demographic. And uh, this is something that helped us, uh, helped inform uh, how we targeted the campaign. In very, very broad strokes, uh, we were going after kind of that um, older, more affluent uh, baby boomer who was looking for some um, kind of the grown up version of uh, visiting Alaska, but also targeting um, younger millennials who are kind of in that, still in that vanguard uh, when it comes to adventure travel. And what they're looking for uh, more specifically in terms of the motivations, like what is it the thing, that, what's the itch that they have that they hope that um, uh, Cordova can, uh, can sc uh, scratch, um, really looking for things like transformation, an expanded worldview, learning, nature and discovery, mental health. And then you can also see uh, some of the other motivations there as well. And so 
uh, we took this research. Uh, this comes from the Adve uh, Adventure Travel Trade uh, Association. And all of this helped inform uh, who it is that we we're going to be targeting for uh, this campaign. What also kind of influenced uh, this campaign was uh, this quote that travel is the only thing you can buy that actually makes you uh, richer. And um, that's a little teaser for some of the strategy that you're going to see here in a few minutes. But the big question that we had to answer uh, for folks who had maybe not have heard of you before, you know, what is Cordova? And the answer was really supplied by my time uh, that I spent down in Cordova. I spoke to uh, a lot of different uh, Cordovans about you know, what is Cordova? What is the soul? Uh, of this place. And I think it really goes back to this quote that Cordova is raw, pure, good, and you want to share it. So um, the other thing that we thought was going back to uh, this idea of the world's richest waters. And I was visiting the net loft and some, uh, someone there told me, it's like, oh yes, we actually have a co color here called Cordova that is uh, inspired by satellite imagery of the blue that you see um, when you look at the world's richest waters outside of uh, Cordova. And there it is right there. And so what this kind of inspired us and inspired our uh, creative teams is blending these two worlds together of science and soul, talking about you know, what the world's richest waters can do. And the big kind of headline thing that they do is um, you know, create this, uh, you know, the wonderful salmon that are in and around your, your waters. And really what people had told us is that the soul is really salmon. So we wanted to say, well, what is the actual effect that these waters have on people if they're looking for that adventure travel and you know, the number one motivation is transformation. And that there's just so many great stories and just so much great life uh, that comes out of uh, what happens when you're exposed to the world's richest waters. We're very, very curious kind of vocabulary, just describing some of the, li uh, the life uh, that's there, like mats of shorebirds, rafts of otters, and even uh, avian auroras is probably my favorite. But it wasn't just the, the, uh, the natural life that's there, but also the rich life that uh, Cordovans uh, lead, whether they're um, artists or entrepreneurs or foragers or fishermen, that um, they have just this incredible uh, richness and, share, and the desire to share that richness with whoever uh, visits. And so it led to this idea that the world's richest water creates the richest life. And so what we handed over to uh, our creative team that ultimately came up with uh, the sea life concept was this strategy, which is show the rich life made possible by the world's richest waters. And uh, Kathy already went through uh, a couple of the creative executions, but these are just more examples of the sea life campaign uh, that went out um, through a myriad of different um, media tactics, which uh, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Leslie now to talk about some of those and also talk about uh, the results. Thanks, Jesse. Um, so yeah, just to give a little bit, uh, a real quick overview of the results of this campaign. Um, this campaign was very successful based on um, industry benchmarks that we use to measure. And a lot of that is due to all of the background work that Jesse just went over to make sure we're targeting the right people and um, targeting the correct behaviors and making sure we are uh, reaching people who are seriously going to consider coming to Cordova. So um, we had two different goals with this campaign. We wanted to reach uh, visitors, potential visitors in lower 48, but then we also wanted to do an outreach to Alaskan visitors um, for travel to Cordova this summer or you know, to remind people that this is right in your backyard and we really want you to consider Cordova. So if you go to the next slide, um, this shows the breakout. The majority of the budget was spent um, in lower 48 markets, but you can see that split there about 80-20. And so about uh, almost 11 million impressions were served in lower 48 and then 2.5 million in Alaska. 
And um, what we really, the goal for this campaign was really to maximize site engagements. So there was the new site, we wanted to get people there, we wanted them to make sure that once they got there, they explored it. And so we optimized the campaigns based on um, people landing on the site and then um, digging deeper. So then if we found somebody who, who uh, had that behavior, then we would optimize them and look for um, lookalikes to those people online to make sure that we were uh, maximizing those site engagements. And, and you can see there the, the click-through rate. So that, that CTR on the end, that 0.74% and 0.43%, that is also a measure of effectiveness of creative. And that just basically is a, a, a showing the relationship between the clicks and the impressions. And typical click-through rate is about a 0.1 to a 0.3%. Um, 0.5 typically. Um, so you can see that average click-through rate is very, very good um, based on just an average of media that we ran. Next to the next slide. And um, digging a little bit into the social. So the, the paid social portion of the campaign, again, these are the, the um, ads that you saw previously, but then we also uh, ran a video. And um, we typically will look at benchmarks for social, um, the engagement rate, which means people who liked, commented, shared, um, anything like that on the ads um, clicked. And you can see that engagement rate is about 3.5%. So that's about 150% above benchmark for the tourism industry. So that's a huge number. Um, and then again, that click-through rate showing how many people were clicking on the ads because we were optimizing towards getting people to the site a 3.3% is um, over 200% um, of the tourism benchmark. So this campaign just uh, really set the world on fire for this for the short amount of time it was in the market. And um, I think that's attributed to the, the strong creative that really captured the attention and then also um, showing that we were targeting the right people and making sure that we were reaching the people that were going to engage with it. And this is um, probably one of the strongest uh, results we have had, but you can see um, at the start of the campaign, this is showing site visits and site traffic. And so you can see the start of the campaign and the end of the campaign, the impact of the advertising on getting people to the site. And so um, majority of the site traffic was due to this, uh, this paid campaign, but it also, um, you can see the organic, Google organic traffic was also really strong and the paid traffic will have an impact on that as well. So um, really strong numbers to show that um, it really did what it was supposed to. And then ending, um, I don't know if you can read these, but lots of fabulous comments on the social campaign. And this just shows the, again, reaching the right people, having a positive impact um, and positive result when people see the ad. Um, is really a testament to the overall uh, success of the campaign. Um, are there any questions about um, anything that we've presented so far from the research to the creative execution to um, any of the results? Um, happy to quickly address anything, any questions that folks have. I have a question. This is Katrina. Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, can you go to the previous slide? I was just looking at the tail, the end of the campaign, 831. Is, is that how fast the engagement tail off um, on things like the website? It, I mean, basically, my read of that is the campaign was super successful. And if you want to, um, sort of instigate or maintain traffic, you need to invest in campaigns. Is that? That's correct. If you, read of, of yes. That? If but, you look at the number of users, the top, the top um, drivers of traffic, you can see that that is the social video, the so paid social, paid search. Um, there is some direct traffic then coming in in number four, but then it's also, then you go back to the display and then Smithsonian. So yes, the paid advertising really um, helps bolster those visits. Um, so yes, keeping something in the market is very advantageous to making sure 
that uh, people are thinking of Cordova. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good for us to think about and, and know moving forward as we come up with our plans. That's a great Thank you. question, uh, Katrina. And that leads me to another question, which um, is, is there typically, um, is there benefit to having like something consistently out there? Is there gonna be drawbacks to um, being out of the paid market for a while and then re-entering? Is we gonna have to build back up momentum again? I mean, is there, is there you know, is there momentum that builds that you see or um, is it all right to have little lapses in your opinion? I mean, ideally, if money wasn't an issue, yes, it would be great if you could uh, be, you know, keep something in the market, especially something like a paid search, which means you're going to get uh, people who are searching for things that you can offer. And so that's going to be your lowest funnel and probably your least expensive as well, because you're only going to be for paying for people that actually are clicking on your your text ads. So we typically like to see paid search consistent. The other thing is Google rewards you when you are a consistent um, presence because they have a thing called a quality score. So when you're in the market, you increase your quality score. It means you're going to be more likely to be seen. Your ads are going to be served and your clicks are going to be cheaper. So when you come in and out, um, that has to be reestablished. Um, the next thing that we, we typically look at then is paid social. Um, but Organic social can also be very, very powerful, especially when you've had a, a paid presence. Those two working together um, are ideal, but maximizing your organic um, channels if you don't have a consistent ad budget and then going into paid search first um, is really what we would recommend for smaller communities that don't have a big ad budget. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I mean, That's I guess my read my read of it is it took about three weeks to hit that first peak and, and a month to hit the second peak and a little longer than that to hit the third peak. So that, um, I guess it's an argument in favor of some consistency. Right. Great Any conversation. Other? Sorry, Any Jesse. Other Any other questions? <laughs> All right, we'll move along. Cool. Well, we are right on time, you guys. We are doing so great. Um, thank you so much to Leslie and Jesse. And um, now I'd like to introduce Kristen Dahl from Cross Current Collective. She has many years of experience uh, working to establish destinations and do destination management. She spent many years in Travel Oregon and um, now she runs her own firm that specializes um, in destination development and management. And we were lucky to have her um, help us create our 15 year destination strategy. So take it away, Kristen. Okay, awesome, thanks. And I also wanna introduce my colleague, Dan Cawson, who also supported the project. Dan's calling in from Arizona, um, recent, recent graduate uh, who studied destination development, so it's really fun to have him on the team. Um, so yeah, I'll just do a quick run through of the strategy that we worked on together. Uh, I know that many of you, if not nearly all of you on the call today, um, were kind of part of this strategy. So, all right, so diving right in. Um, just talk a little bit about what a destination strategy is, what we did, what we produced, and then what's next. Um, and I'll just say here at the outset, most of my work is in designing and facilitating fairly lengthy community processes to get to these outputs. And so this was a very, very fast timeline, um, and uh, and which was okay, you know, the smaller community, and you guys have been, you know, just wonderful to work with so it made it easy but um it was also during peak summer tourist season so that you know you know presented some challenges but we did the best we could but just what i want to share is that this is just a platform for you guys moving forward and so a lot of the work that i produced for kathy in the chamber was really a, you know kind of included teaching tools so that she can share this work and continue to kind of carry it forward so a destination strategy pretty simple it's a roadmap 
Um, the way I do them, though, is not a strategic plan. It's about helping communities set an intention and a vision, and then um, really spend some time focusing on strategic impact areas and outcomes and um, allowing that to kind of guide the, the projects and things that actually happen on the ground over the upcoming years. So uh, a destination strategy typically encompasses all of these different facets. So looking at destination management in terms of how you're going to coordinate all these activities, destination development, that's the act of improving the experience, marketing, which of course we just covered, uh, raising that awareness and really driving um, interest and inspiration, and then destination stewardship as well. So how are you, you know, actively protecting the ecosystems and the landscapes and the culture as you as you implement your strategy for tourism. So um, the community context, I don't think that, I think this is a community presentation, you understand your context. Um, the visitation was really down pre-pandemic and then the pandemic hit. So there was kind of this double whammy and a real need to focus on um, tourism and rebuilding. And there was this opportunity to kind of go from this where different organizations and businesses and individuals are really working in the community all kind of involved in tourism, but not necessarily communicating or in alignment to kind of a common outcome uh, in the future. So that's what this work really does is provide that space for um, aligning resources, aligning intentions and having kind of a greater impact at the end. So the very, very fast process that we did was a step one destination scan where we really looked at all the sort of related planning documents <clears throat> and got prepared for more of an engagement phase, which we did very rapidly, kind of in July and early August. And that included two different strategy workshops with the community, um, to the community, several interviews with key stakeholders, as many as we could pack in, and then we also did a survey. And all of that work really helped to kind of generate the strategy that Kathy and I then worked to finalize and and form. And then the last piece I'll share with you tonight is about the destination leadership team, which is kind of the exciting next phase of this work. So within that strategy, you have all of these components, a scan, a vision, values that the community wants to maintain, strategic focus areas, uh, a destination leadership team, kind of the architecture for that. And then lastly, um, we generated a toolkit for Kathy so that she had sort of additional tools and resources that she could use as she um, gets started with this work more intentionally over the winter. I want to say a huge thanks. Many of you are on the uh, presentation call tonight, but uh, quite a few organizations, I would say, for um, a relatively you know, small community. It was great to see such a, a diversity of participants and also um, just really getting the sense of the community and everyone's willingness to come together and work on this. It's really, really cool to experience that. Um, <clears throat> so the strategy itself, so the first component is this vision. Um, this is a vision narrative. It's what is a community's kind of North Star. It's something that you focus on intentionally for a short period of time and you get something on paper that's the general rough sketch of where everyone wants to head. And then you can continue to refer back to that hopefully over the many next many years as you put together your um, projects and take your next steps. Um, I'm going to pass the baton over to Kathy, who will walk us through the vision. So this is our 15-year vision of success. So this is um, the, the this is in future tense. Well, you know, it's 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 in the future, and this is um, aspirational. This is where we want to be uh, 15 years from now, if we've reached our goals with destination marketing and, and strategy. This place, ancestral homeland, Iyak, Chugach region people, Clinket, and Athabascan peoples, Cordova is a small, gritty Alaskan fishing community, brimming with artists, scientists, and hardworking individuals shaped and sustained by the landscape. Situated at the confluence of Prince William Sound, the Northern Gulf of Alaska, and the Copper River watershed, the region is full of highly productive ecosystems, rich in fish and wildlife resources that span boreal forests, complex wetlands, tidewater glaciers, rocky intertidal shorelines, and coastal barrier islands. The 700,000 acre delta at the mouth of the Copper River comprises the largest contigu continuous wetland on the Pacific coast of North America. The Copper River flows into the northern Gulf of Alaska, a waypoint on the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt, which creates what has become known as the world's richest waters. 
home to Copper River salmon. The Delta is also an important stopover on the Pacific Flyway for millions of migrating shorebirds and waterfowl. Our culture. Our deep love of this place compels us to graciously welcome visitors and share our unique history and way of life, including our traditions, artistry, science, and fishing. We're down to earth, easy to talk to, and can help provide a deeper understanding of this landscape through our stories and activities. There's a buzz as visitors get to directly experience our way of life and why we live here. We found a way to share our culture with others in a way that strengthens and uplifts our core community values. Again, this is just the aspirational vision of uh, what Cordova will become through tourism. The outdoors. Adventurers seeking off the beaten path authentic Alaskan experiences come for extended stays across the seasons. Motivated by easy access to wild experiences locals have come to know and love from mountaintop to ocean, visitors can hike and mountain bike our expansive trail system and fish, boat, bird, and kayak our waterways. We've made it easy to access key attractions such as Child's Glacier, Sheridan Glacier, remote U.S. Forest Service cabins, and the broader Prince William Sound. Travelers can easily explore our natural resources and fully immerse themselves in a beauty beyond their imaginations. Vibrant services, also another important part of this puzzle. Our town is brimming with amenities year round due to an increase in locally owned businesses. We offer quality lodging options, eateries serving local foods, transportation options, guided activities, gear rentals, including kayaks, bikes, and boats, shopping, educational opportunities, and entertainment. We have a bustling downtown where people gather and share stories of all the amazing things they have experienced each day. The Cordova Center is a busy hub, attracting a steady flow of visitors for meetings and events, and regular ferry and airline service provides dependable access to Cordova. Marketing, what we aspire to in our marketing. The unique experiences found only in Cordova are actively shared with the world through digital word of mouth and ongoing marketing campaigns. So we offer a central hub with inspiring and accurate trip planning information, including transportation linkages, compelling itineraries for every season, and options for choosing excursion providers. Our marketing attracts visitors of all ages with a strong desire for big Alaskan adventure and a love for the small town vibe. We have improved consistency of visitation by targeting key niche markets, such as small cruise lines and burgers. Community livability. Tourism is no longer a side hustle for many, visit, for many businesses as visitation is strong throughout the year. The industry is seen as a part of the fabric of this community, offering a way to exchange values and keep our businesses healthy year round. Cordova offers affordable places to live, which supports the tourism workforce and attracts newcomers. All right, so this is long, but it's a North Star. It's not a public piece. This is not this is not used in marketing materials. It's kind of just an internal, here's what we're aiming for, something that can be pulled out over time and looked back at to see how you're coming along. So community values, um, the Cordova community values are, um, these are the values that we work to sort of hone in on. The key components that the community really wants to maintain is central and to ensure um, those, sorry, to ensure are protected. And, and this is a piece that can actually be used in visitor communication if the community chooses to communicate their core values. So connection is one um, that the small town affords us a slower pace that allows for genuine connection is important. Um, we are open-minded and wholeheartedly welcome. Sorry, we're, we are open-minded and wholeheartedly welcome people from other places. Uh, the sense of grit, so we are a hardworking Alaskan community built on the backbone of commercial fishing. We're shaped by our perseverance. Our ancestors are incredibly important. We honor Alaska natives who have lived in this region for centuries and we continue to learn from their wisdom and tradition. Uh, this idea of nature as sustenance. So we're deeply connected to nature and sustain ourselves through fishing, hunting, foraging, and outdoor recreation. And also this reverence of natural systems. So we have this deep respect for nature, or excuse me, for the natural environment that affords us our way of life. And as a result, we protect it. Our immersion in natural systems drives our scientific curiosity and inspires our creative expression. So it's pretty fun to kind of have those collaborative conversations about what it is that's core and central to the things you want to maintain as you grow and develop over time. So then working back from there, if that's your longer term vision, you know, where do you need to focus now? So this was our next conversation in our workshop, which was um, 
what is it that we need to undertake and provide our set our focus on so that we can actually make progress because obviously there's lots to do but unless we can set that intention um, we'll probably have just too many things to work on at one time so we ended up uh, focusing in on four strategic areas um, the first is improve visitor experience in Cordova and support business growth. The second is increase visitation and improve that level of consistency. So that's where a lot of the, the marketing activities lie. And then C is improve visitor access to Cordova and key visitor attractions. So that included the big transportation in and out of Cordova, as well as providing better access uh, to and from the experiences sort of surrounding Cordova. And then the fourth one is kind of this underlying sort of contextual thing, which is fostering community collaboration and coordination. And, and that's the work that's needed in order to kind of move all of this forward. So within each of these, I'm just gonna give you one as an example and then wrap up. Um, but within uh, the improve and diversify the experience, you know, we just kind of set the context. You know, the community uh, really has identified the need for additional visitor services. And there seems to be a commonly held belief that there's a lot more that community can do to package and share existing experiences better. Um, the, the folks who participated in the workshop really worked to create the outcome. So we set an intention of where do we want to be in five years in this impact area. And you can see some of those <clears throat> things on the screen, robust outfitting, thriving downtown, with a healthy mix of businesses, and then the business community is really thriving. And then working back from there, if that's your five-year intention, we talked about one and two-year outcomes. So what do we need to see on the ground? What do we need to see that's different, a change in the world in one to two years? Um, so quite a few outcomes there that look pretty close to project ideas. Um, uh, but you can see, yeah, pretty, pretty um, specific. We have at least one business offering guided kayak trips and kayak rentals. Pretty awesome, it's doable, right? You guys are gonna do this. And then we looked at low hanging fruit options. So if those are your outcomes, what can you do now? And there's a number of things, um, developing new themed visitor itineraries that kind of packages things, um, looking for ways to uplift, develop and integrate opportunities to experience and learn about native Alaskan heritage, et cetera. So those are some of the examples. And then a, a bold project idea that came out of this uh, is the idea of sort of creating this calendar of seasons that sort of align with your big festivals in the community and working with businesses, artists, um, anyone in the community who wants to kind of see this thing manifest the theme over these different months um, in the community in a way to sort of stimulate collaboration and stimulate um, better business connectivity. So how we'll get this done. This is the destination leadership team, group of stakeholders who play a, a, an important role in the destination. Um, and, you know, I say this, it sounds pretty simple, but it is, um, it's not necessarily the case that these types of teams, you know, exist, even in really um, highly visited uh, destinations. It, so it's, you know, I'm going to say it's an innovative approach, but it, it, it's um, definitely not something that comes together naturally without a little bit of intention. So a destination leadership team is really, you know, a group of stakeholders that comes together to communicate with one another to improve the destination. They kind of steward or champion that destination strategy. They work collaboratively to identify those priority projects, figure out how to resource them, and actually work collaboratively to implement some of those things that might not be done by one organization. And then also providing opportunities to share important work and important initiatives and actually help the community rally around um, certain points of action when needed. So just a little visual, destination leadership team, project action teams that might be sort of happening separate from the actual leadership team. And then um, I'll close here by just saying that Kathy has made some great progress in making invitations to um, the organizations and businesses that were identified to serve on a destination leadership team. So I'll pass the baton back to Kathy in case you want to share anything about that work um, and then move on to questions. Yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about the, the destination leadership team to um, launch. We're hoping to um, have a meeting within the next month and um, I've sent out invitations. So many of you in this call um, have, have been part of this process going forward. And um, I've invited some of you to be part of this effort. And 
So if you've received an invitation and you'd like to participate, please let me know. And if you haven't received an invitation and you'd like to participate, please let me know. Um, this is this is really going to be a passion project uh, for me. This is something that I've been wanting to do since I got this job um, five years ago. So um, I, I also want to just say that I was on a statewide call with um, all of the tourism industry folks from around state and we were talking about um like regenerative tourism and what can be done and i i mentioned that we had just made this plan and some aspects of it and um large communities were really excited and impressed by it and um actually used the word jelly they're a little jelly that we had a plan like this in place um, because I, I do think it's innovative, Kristen, that, that we're moving in this direction. Um, and I'm really glad that we can do that because we don't get opportunities like this to, you know, make a strategy and a plan every year or two. I mean, it's been 20 years since we've done this. So I'm excited to move forward with something that um, maybe it is on the bleeding edge a little. Um, so thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The opportunity. I'm just excited to visit you guys uh, during your next mushroom festival. That's my goal. <laughs> it is a fun time to come. Does anybody have any questions for Kristen about the, or for me or for anybody um, that was involved in the destination strategy? I saw um, some things in the <clears throat> chat about sharing this with city council and I did invite them all. In fact, I registered them all <laughs> to come, but it um, doesn't look like they made it. But I do, I am recording this and I'm planning to um, share it on, on our YouTube channel and it can certainly, I can certainly send a direct link to them. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, Kristen, one thing that, um, you know, is in your larger presentation um, is that when we were putting, when she was putting this plan together, she really um, did a great job of looking at the other plans that are already in place, the, the city comprehensive plan, the um, Prince William Sound Economic Development District um, comprehensive plan that they're working on, the airport master plan, just all, all the different planning that's going on um, kind of on, on top of and around the corner. And that is built into the strategy that she um, built for us as well. Just kind of saying like, what are these, I can't remember the term you used for it, basically opportunities um, to collaborate with these other plans. Yeah, yeah, just that there's other strategies that are um, have been identified, but might not have actors necessarily implementing them yet. So I think, you know, building a destination leadership team and putting some priority project action teams into place can, you know, I think you'll be able to enroll other people who are, you know, involved in these other planning efforts to come together because I think, yeah, sometimes it just needs a little, little spark. All right. Cool. Okay, well, thank you guys. It's been really fun. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen and Dan as well. If there's no other questions for them, I'll just, uh, I'll move on to the next part of the presentation that I'm excited to share with you. Um, let's see if I have my stuff ready here. If I can share my screen. Okay. Uh, is it that one? Okay. Can you see it? You see my screen? Okay, cool. Well, I just wanted to um, kind of go over a couple of the other assets that were created during this campaign. One of the things that I was excited about is that um, we were able to put out there kind of um, an additional face for Cordova um, in the uh, web and social media world. And that is in addition, you know, up to this point, it's always been Cordova Chamber of Commerce is kind of who we are. Um, but there's also now Visit Cordova, which is uh, run internally by our team here. Um, and we have some new social media accounts um, that are set up for that new branding. So you can find them at facebook.com slash visit Cordova. Kobe Lynn, can you type the um, URLs here into the chat? for everyone. 
Um, so the Facebook and the Instagram are both pretty easy. It's just facebook.com slash visit Cordova and instagram.com slash visit Cordova. Um, I wanted to kind of do something real quick to shake things up. Um, if you guys have a cell phone um, with you or another window on your computer um, and you want to participate, we're going to do a little um, sweepstakes here. <laughs> so um, if you have not yet uh, liked and followed these accounts at facebook.com slash visit Cordova and instagram.com slash visit Cordova, I want to invite you to do that right now. And I'm going to put a one minute timer on there for you to just take a minute and do that. And at the end of the presentation, the winner, we're going to choose a winner. And so basically, if you have liked, you, you can like one or the other or both. And once you've done it, if you've already done it, then you can just say you've already done it. But um, if you want to do it right now, you can, once it's done, go ahead and go in the chat and say, I did it. Um, and let me know if you did just Facebook, or just Instagram or both. And then you'll be entered to win this. This is pretty cool, a little gift basket. So the first item in the gift basket is actually um, by Cordova. Or what is it called, Kobe Lynn? Um, Cordova. Cordova what? Outdoors. Cordova Outdoors, thank you so much. I had a mind fart. Cordova Outdoors is a, is a company, it's not actually based in Cordova, but they are partnering with some local businesses in Cordova um, and they make coolers and such and they gave us this really cool camo hat. Um, we also have this beautiful sticker. Um, this is our shorebird artwork, but we um, have just the Cordova Alaska info on there. You can also claim a shorebird t-shirt of any size and style and a fungus vest t-shirt of any size and style. And I have one of these vintage packs of Cordova Art Walk cards, the five pack of Cordova Art, Art Walk cards that were done vintage. I hate how it does that. How do I make it not blur? Get in front of my face. Um, and by the way, Cordova Art Walk, that acronym is CAW and the little logo for it has a raven next to it, which I think is really cute. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and let me know in the chat um, at your leisure whether you have done that or not. And now I'm going to, um, before we move on to the next part of our presentation, which is gonna be the business toolkit, I just wanted to briefly share with you um, the 30 second video that was created for us by Spawn. Um, and that was one of the main pieces that we used to do our marketing um, and outreach on social. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and I can do share sound, optimize for video. I have the right screen. Can you guys see it? Yep. Okay. The water surrounding water. Alaska produce an abundance of natural life unlike anywhere else. That abundance is felt in its people. It's something you can take with you, a harmony that settles in your bones and soothes your soul, a zest for life on nature's terms. It's all the best things in life nestled into a community of nature's best stewards, artists, foragers, and fisher folk that never takes it for granted. Come to Cordova. See life. The water's... Cool. Well, um, thank you all that participated in that, that little game. And this was a nice little break. Now we're gonna have one last section of this presentation and I'm gonna hand the baton over to Kobe Lynn. All right, can everyone see my screen? So I'm happy to be with everyone tonight. It's been really fun to be a part of this entire project and to see it from start to finish. Um, what was really cool tonight for me was to see the pieces of Spawn campaign um, and then in see the intention of the strategy and where we come right here with the destination toolkit. We've created so many different printed options and online versions of material that everyone can use um, to their benefit for their business or for themselves, promoting and inviting people to Cordova. 
Um, and we've just made the experience of coming here a little bit easier. Um, so this video is an example of the content created for the campaign. And it's now available here on the destination toolkit for you to use however you decide you want to use it, which I think is just really amazing. Um, tourism in Cordova affects everyone and everyone, everything that's printed either online or any kind of media also affects tourism in Cordova. And so this is the reason why we've gone, moved forward as a chamber to create this destination toolkit um, as a resource for all of us to amplify the tested and proven content that's been out there to build off of it and to magnify what we have created. Um, thank you very much, Leslie. I, I really appreciate the feedback about that there is power in using organic social media for us to move forward. And the fact that we've created this destination toolkit that can support that only reinforces what you've said. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, so what is in here? Um, as we move forward together with these resources, we come together with one, more, one voice to create tourism demand here in Cordova, but strategically and with the values that we've talked about, which are really important. The intention matters here and the type of people that we invite matter. Um, so one of the first resources that you come to on this destination toolkit is the media suite. And this, these images have been provided by local photographers. Um, and it's been really fun to see the beauty and what's captured by so many here because we love it so much. And Jesse talked about that. Um, and the, the way that the ad campaign was portrayed and what we want going forward with one voice to, to continue that love and abundance of life that we all get to enjoy. So the first, this is the media suite. It has still images and banners and different sizes and whatnot. They have different writing on them that you can go in and look at. They're in a Google Doc that's available for anyone. And we have a 30 second video that you just saw and a 15 second video um, that you can use um, on your website, on your social media platforms, um, individual or business wise, you can use them in media campaigns. However you want, it's there for you to use. And then we have our outreach strategy kit. But I um whoops sorry oh smaller um there you go <laughs> I'm like everything's in my way to touch it and make it go the way um okay so in this outreach strategy kit it actually this is touchy wow okay Sorry, can use, I'm. Can you use your left and right arrow keys? There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, so, it, what this does, this outreach strategy kit brings in uh, pieces of the information that you've been given tonight from Spawn Ideas talking about target marketing to our community values and explaining what those are. It's a quick reference guide for you to go to and use whenever you're creating any kind of campaign or media or um, want to share about Cordova and you're talking about tourism um, in your business or individually by yourself, your own. So um, the target market has been, um, this is where, what we got from Spawn and the, who we were targeting when uh, with all of the ads that we were putting out. And so this is for you to use um, these, all of this information when you are acknowledging a niche here in Cordova of who to come and people that are interested in coming, coming. Like Leslie talked about, they're already searching for it. So if you're doing any kind of ad campaigns or anything, here's the information. You don't have to go out and do any kind of market research. The information's right here for you to use. These are destination websites. 
So these following websites, these three right here that are big and bold, these um, are big and bold because these are sites that businesses here in Cordova are already using. So the Chamber of Commerce, we are the we are providing all of a majority of the destination marketing um, ads and campaigns and all of that. And so using us as we're ranking high, we have the most views. Being part of this only benefits your business. Being a part of Google Maps. Um, here in Cordova, I don't feel that many of us use Google Maps, but everyone outside of Cordova uses Google Maps. And so when they come, that's their go-to and they want to be able to find some something quite easily. And I've talked to a lot of businesses that by having a location, um, having their business on Google Maps, they've actually been found organically. So this is really important. We also on the Chamber website have an interactive Google Map um, embedded in our website. And so when you are on there, that's one more way that you get found easily. Um, and then TripAdvisor is the world's largest travel platform. Why not be a part of it? Um, there are other sites that um, other, you know, websites that are similar, but this one, many of Cordova businesses are already using it. So when we come together with that one voice moving forward in that one direction, it only creates more visibility and higher ranking status for all of us across the board. Um, other destination websites are listed below that are targeting um, marketing travel in Alaska and are ones that we also did was part of our marketing and the marketing and campaign that we put forth this summer. So you can build off of that as well. Um, over here on the side, it talks about asking for reviews because word of mouth referral is still the most effective way to connect with new people and to bring people back. So use these tips and strategies moving forward for you. They're here for you. And these are touch points. This is content on this page is used, um, has been used in other marketing ads the ones that just used over the summer and then in the past as well, but are still very effective and still um, are worth being used. Um, so, and it's here for you to reuse or provide inspiration for your own creation of any way, in any way. So um, over here at the top, these two slogans, these are the two that we, we've used over the summer. And then these are the ones in the past um, that have been used as well. So social media, where you can find um, Visit Cordova is the Facebook that we talked about. We also have a Pinterest page and that's under Cordova Chamber, um, an Instagram page and a YouTube page. So these are all places that you can go to find content, to reuse in whichever, whatever way that you want to. Um, by following Visit Cordova, content for you, please take the photos, make sure you um, acknowledge the photographer in the photos. And um, it's, we just want you to have as much access to creating whatever you need to support your business to succeed. And um, for us to come together in this one vision moving forward. Um, and then tagging us. So if you tag at Visit Cordova, um, it, you're saying, hey, you guys, I'm here and I'd like you to share what, uh, what I've put out. And we want to share what you've put out. We want to share the love that everyone has here. Um, and so we want to collaborate that way. Hashtags right now, I apologize. Um, Hashtags right now, Instagram like has changed a number of times in the last couple of months. And so staying on top of that can sometimes be tricky, but right now they're saying only use three to five and use them in your post. Um, so the top five, these are our hashtags that we're using right now, as long as they're relevant. If we're speaking about world's witches waters, then that goes in. If we're not really talking about that, then we're not putting it in. Um, but for the most part, those top three we're using across the board regularly. So these are all written in camel case hashtags. And camel case hashtags, hashtags make them easier for screen reader accessibility. That means everyone with every ability has access to finding 
what your the content that you're putting out. Camel case means that the first letter of each word in a hashtag is capitalized. The world's richest waters words have been used for a long time by the Prince William Sound Science Center and the Copper River Prince William Sound Marketing Association. They have ample examples of how to incorporate the verbiage into their posts. This one here on the left actually doesn't mention World's Richest Waters in the feed, but it does mention Prince William Sound. And so therefore they have in below, they have the hashtag World's Richest Waters. Here in Pineapple and Coconut, this is um, a guest from that was part of Copper River Prince William Sound Marketing Association um, collaboration that came into town and they shared this after their experience here, this recipe. And here you can see they tagged them and then down below they have World's Richest Waters tagged as well. So these are just examples of how it can be used. And you can easily go into um, just Google and hit hashtag world's richest, richest waters, or you can go into Instagram or Facebook and do the exact same thing and pull up posts to find content or ideas or inspiration for you to use it as well. These are social media examples. Um, for different types of businesses that can be used verbatim or as inspiration. Collaborations. So we, um, I, I really love the fact that um, this goes along, this like absolutely is, is something that goes right in hand with our goals of our destination strategy and um, creating these packages with local businesses can create an experience from start to finish. And although our targeted market enjoys having an experience that they get to hand pick and, and do all the things, they don't know what they don't know. And so by us telling them, like, come to Cordova, hey, do you want this package? And so just an example is the artist way package. And that can include by collaborating with the net loft or a photography a photographer here to do a class, um, museum tours and lodging and prepackaged meals by an eatery. You put it all together. A sea life package where a more mariculture and Prince William Sound Science Center tour with lodging and breakfast, lunch and di or dinner voucher. These are just a few examples of how we can support one another um, in our effort moving forward. So what else is here on the destination toolkit? It talks a little bit more about social media. The examples are there and the collaborations. Um, another way of collaborating is with our co-op advertising opportunities with the Cordova Chamber of Commerce. We've done Edible Alaska ads. We have website ads um, on the Chamber of Commerce website and co-op radio ads coming in the future as well. We also have one last thing that's part of this is our 100 thing, 101 things to do in Cordova list that now has a very playful game to play on it and has a business directory. This is a decal um, that you can print off at your business. And this allows visitors to connect with what can I do next if they're not really sure when they're here in town or I need this business and I'm not sure how to find it. These are simple things that you can put up in your business to just support collaboration and um, easy fluid experience for visitors here. Cordova's in tourism industry is strongest when we work together and um, I am really excited to see the collaborations that we have going forward. All of this information is available for every business and individual to use however they decide to do so. However, if, if there is a chamber member that would like one-on-one -on -one collaboration or ideas of how they can use these resources, they are welcome to reach out to me and I would love to create 
some new things and with this message going forward. So thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for me? You answered all my questions along the way, Kobe, but I just want to say this is awesome. Yeah, you have done a really nice job. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Kobe Lynn put in um, a lot of time and, and thought and we all kind of, it was a new concept and we all kind of put our brains together of what can we do to um, give one more tool to Cordova businesses to, we, this was such a great um, campaign and project and it had such great success as, as you've heard tonight from, from Leslie and, and Kristen and, and Jesse and others. Um, so we don't want to let it, we don't want this to die on the vine. We want this um, work to continue. And so with our two in our destination leadership team and um, the tools in our business toolkit, we're hoping that this effort can actually um, not just, you know, keep going, but actually bloom and blossom into something that um, the whole community can give behind. And, and maybe we can make our way to that 15 year vision where we have a kayak rental company. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, there's certain aspects of the um, vision that are more attainable and some that are less, so, you know, getting to Child's Glacier again would be great. We'll see. It's aspirational. Um, well, I just, I want to um, say thanks to everyone that presented and thanks to everyone that was here. Um, I want to uh, pick winners for this little game that we played. And um, I want to, let's see, I want to just share some information with you in case um, any of you want to get in touch and you don't already have my, my information. Um, here it is. Oop, there we go. So um, let's pick a winner. So this is for this basket. Where did the basket go? Right here. Of goodies, and the winner is Wendy. Wendy Rainey, congratulations, Wendy! Woo Yay! Yay, me! Um, cool. Well, um, that is it for our presentation tonight. Uh, thank you again to. Jesse and Leslie from Spawn and Karen behind the scenes to Kristen and Dan and to Seth, to the board that was very supportive, to Kobe Lynn, my teammate in this work and to Christy Banks and Laurel Trout who um, have been helping substantially in the work that the chamber does as well. So um, this is not just the chamber's plan. This is the community of Cordova's plan for success. This is our work that we're moving forward with together. And I hope that we can um, have the support of the whole community because um, even if you're not a tourism related business, there is some aspect of your business, I bet, that um, is place-based, that there's something about your business that um, makes it what it is by being here in Cordova. Um, so I hope that there's something here for everyone. And even if you're just an individual and you're not a business owner and you want to participate in this, get on social media and hashtag visit Cordova and at us, at visit Cordova. And if you do that, we can share your posts and that just amplifies the message even more. So thanks all. And um, if you guys have any questions, you can follow up with me directly here at the chamber and uh, have a great night.